Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are once again going to be appraising the anime in a most positive light by taking a look at some of the more phenomenal moments that the anime didn't just nail, but actually elevated from the original manga material in every way. Because when the anime hits, it hits hard. And those achievements, however few and far between, deserve their due recognition. But before I get into this list properly, I'll just say that this is indeed a sequel list and there will be a link to the original video in the description below, which I highly encourage you to check out. But for now, the criteria criteria for this list is strangely similar to the first. The moments in question must have occurred in both the anime and the manga, so that we have some basis for comparison. And other than that, it simply needs to be strongly argued that the anime did it better. As a result of that, it should go without saying that everything on this list must be canon, because filler just doesn't occur in manga, unless it's the Davy backfire. But let's not talk about that. And with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to another top five times the One Piece anime outperformed the manga. Number five. The Crocus Gag One way in which the anime is frequently able to surpass the manga is via comedy, owing entirely to the control of timing and delivery, something that can be difficult to achieve in manga form, as the reader will generally go through the material at their own pace, which may make certain gags more or less effective. And one joke the anime crafted to absolute perfection is the introduction of Crocus during the short-lived reverse mountain arc. Through use of sharp cuts, dramatic sound effects, and tense music, the anime is able to build up an incredibly serious atmosphere, one that makes you feel like the Straw Hats could actually be eviscerated by this man at any second, only to drop the audience into comedic freefall when Crocus chooses to lie down and read a newspaper. Not only that, this style of joke works so well that it is played to great effect two more times immediately following this, with my personal favourite portion of the gag being Crocus demanding that the Straw Hat stop or someone is going to die, only to then clarify that that someone would be him. Which isn't to say that these jokes don't work in the manga as well, they certainly do, but the anime adaptation is an entirely different beast, producing tight, effective comedy that had my stomach aching from laughter after initially viewing it, and therefore serving as the perfect opening example for this list. Number 4. The Introduction of Soga King Keeping the comedy theme going, we have the introduction of the world's greatest sharpshooting superhero, and annoyingly enough, I have to break my own criteria here, sort of. You see, this is far from a case of a straight up adaptation. It may even technically be considered filler, but in its defense, the anime did something highly uncharacteristic and invested the time and money into a sequence that would serve both the scene and the character in a far greater manner than the manga ever could. And Toei achieved this by producing a full scale anime opening title sequence, complete with an original song performed by Kappa Yamaguchi, the voice of Soga King himself. This sequence sequence takes superb advantage of cliché Japanese television openings, featuring super quick zoom-ins on the main character, and even a closing shot of him overlooking a sunset after a job well done. And it was just so perfect because what this did was give the audience an insight into the kind of shenaniganry that exists within the wonderfully creative mind of Usopp before seamlessly transitioning back into the reality of the One Piece world, to be met with the completely weirded out looks of both Frankie and Sanji. But as a result of this opening title sequence, whenever I think about Soga King, this song immediately begins playing in my mind. And I believe that it has assisted into contributing to the immortalization of Soga King in the global fanbase, and that is one hell of a profound achievement. Number 3. Mary's Funeral Moving into the territory of drama, we now have to discuss the one and only time that a member of the Straw Hat crew has tragically passed away. I should say that up until this point in the series, drama had been played wonderfully throughout the entirety of the Water 7 saga, and this moment is where it all culminated. Not in the typical climax meaning of the word, but more akin to a dam slowly breaking and finally bursting with a flood of emotion. Now this was sad in the manga, but it had nothing on what the anime was able to produce through the use of touching music, masterful vocal performance, and probably the one and only time in the series that I'll admit was a good use of revisiting old material. The anime takes us on a journey through the life and times of the Going Merry, reminding us of just how much craziness this little ship has been a part of, and making Merry feel like a true member of the crew. And not only that, but this particular episode had the good fortune of being animated uncharacteristically well, especially for the Any Slobby era, which is when, in my opinion, the animation began to take a sharp nosediving quality that still seems to be in free fall to this very day. However, the funeral of the Going Merry was lucky enough to be immortalized in one perfectly real last episode. Number 2. I want to live. Sticking with the any sloppy motif, we now have what I honestly feel is one of the most iconic moments in the series, both in the manga and the anime. However, sadly, the manga does not have the advantage of Robin's voice actress, Yuriko Yamaguchi. When I first watched this scene, I had no knowledge of Japanese whatsoever, but her performance as Nico Robin yelling Ikitai made me go out and actively research the word itself because I needed to know exactly what was being said in that powerful moment. And not only that, but Mayumi Tanaka's performance as Luffy also deserves a lot of recognition here as the words ikitai to ie are similarly ingrained into my being at this point, which is Luffy demanding that Robin admit she wants to live. 
And all of this is set against one of the greatest pieces of music to ever grace the One Piece anime, a song called I'm Here With You Too, which I would describe as a track that breaks you down into a very vulnerable state before building you up bigger, better, and stronger. And in the episode specifically, everything is capped off with Luffy saying leave everything to us, which is one of the most epic endings to an episode in the entirety of the series. And yet there is still one moment that I cannot deny being number one, Binks Sake. So before I get into this, I just want to say that I was absolutely flooded with comments about this in my original video, and I have to say that, yeah, I'm a bit of a fool for not including it there. The final concert of the Rumbar Pirates is a torturously heart-wrenching sequence, very similar to the funeral of the Going Merry, actually, in regards to its core structure as a montage of scenes, except instead of one comrade dying, it's an entire crew. But all of this is contrasted by Bink Sake itself, which is inherently a happy and celebratory song. And I know that throughout this video I've mentioned music a lot, but there is no greater display of the power of sound than here. I think that this moment kind of struggles in the manga because it's so musically based. However, in the anime, we get the full picture and it even allows you to sing along if you have a basic grasp of Japanese. And all of this is designed to hit you so, so much harder when the Rumbar pirates slowly die one by one until only Brook is left. Watching the scene in the anime actually gave me a new appreciation for Brook's story, putting its tragic nature on par with, if not above, that of the other Straw Hat crew members. It is a crowning achievement of the anime and a supremely worthy winner of this list. But that pretty much does it for another top five times the One Piece anime outperformed the manga. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line View Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also, I've recently launched a Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own favorites superb anime moments in the series. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.